setup and reconditioning rotors. Preparation. Inspect the rotor carefully for scoring, rust ridges at the inner and outer circumference of the rotor, and hard spots. Any excessive wear or deformity should be noted, and if not within acceptable limits, the rotor should be replaced. Use a micrometer to check the thickness of the rotor at no less than three points around the circumference, about one inch, or 25.4 millimeters in from the outer diameter. If the rotor thickness varies between readings, it should be reconditioned. However, if the thickness is less than the minimum established by the manufacturer, or if it will be less after reconditioning, the rotor should be replaced. Note, most often the discard thickness dimension is cast or stamped into the rotor, not the minimum machine to thickness. Lathe Setup Install a silencer band on the mounted rotor. Stretch the band around the rotor and hook the metal loop over a lead weight. Center the twin cutter to the rotor. Loosen the stud nut and adjust the twin cutter so that the rotor is centered between the tool bits. The slot of the twin cutter should be approximately parallel to the lathe spindle. Tighten the stud nut firmly. Install the safety shield. Review the cautions and danger section and the general safety information at the beginning of the operating manual. The safety shield is easily screwed onto the twin cutter in the threaded mounting hole provided. Warning: Always wear safety glasses or a face shield. Cutting or grinding on an exposed surface such as a rotor will produce flying chips and debris. Adjust the spindle speed to match the rotor size. Use the faster speeds for passenger car and most light duty truck rotors. Choose lower speeds when machining medium duty and larger truck rotors and some solid rotors. Refer to the speed and feed reference chart located on the front of the lathe for suggested settings. Make sure that the tool bits clear the rotor surfaces and the silencer band. Give the rotor a full turn by hand and watch for clearance all the way around. Verify that all components have been fastened properly. Turn the lathe on. Turn each tool bit control, the outer knurled knobs, clockwise until the tool bits just contact the rotor surfaces. When the tool bits make contact, Rotate each of the inner depth of cut collars to zero and back the tool bits away from the rotor. From this point on, all tool adjustments will be made with the tool bit controls. The inner depth of cut collars will be the reference and should not be moved. Turn the crossfeed hand wheel until the tool bits are at midpoint of the rotor face. Turn the left hand tool bit control until the tool bit contacts the rotor surface and makes a scratch cut. After the cut is made, back the tool bits off and turn the lathe off. The scratch will usually appear as an incomplete circle. This is caused by run out or wobble due to rotor condition or by the way the rotor is mounted on the arbor. If you see excessive run out on the rotor, check rotor mounting by loosening the arbor nut and turning the rotor 180 degrees by hand on the arbor. Make sure the inside adapter does not rotate along with the rotor. Then retighten the arbor nut, turn the crossfeed hand wheel back one half turn, turn the lathe on, and make a second scratch cut. If the scratch cuts are side by side, the runout or wobble is caused by rotor condition. A dial indicator may be used to compare rotor runout with manufacturer's specifications. If the scratch cuts are opposite one another, 180 degrees, the rotor may not be properly mounted on the arbor. Remove the rotor and examine the arbor and all adapters for nicks, burrs, chips, dirt, or rust. Inspect the rotor mounting surface for rust or damage. Clean, remount, or replace as necessary. 
recheck setting of the depth of cut collars, which were set to zero earlier by moving the tool bits inward until they just contact the surfaces of the rotor. The collars should be at zero. Reset the collars if necessary. After you've verified that the rotor is mounted properly, turn the crossfeed hand wheel clockwise until the tool bits are near the rotor hat. Turn the lathe on. Turn both tool bit controls to the desired depth of cut and lock them in position by tightening the red lock knobs above the tool bits. Note, either rough or finished cuts may be taken to resurface a rotor. Generally, finished cuts should be four thousandths, ten millimeters, to six thousandths, or fifteen millimeters per side. Note, either rough or finished cuts may be taken to resurface a rotor. Generally, finished cuts should be four thousandths to six thousandths, or 0.1 to 0.15 millimeters per side. Very shallow cuts of less than four thousandths or 0.1 millimeter per side tend to reduce tool bit life because the heat generated during reconditioning isn't transferred to the rotor efficiently. Rough cuts may be taken from six thousandths to ten thousandths or 0.15 to 0.25 millimeters per side. Press the rotor start button on the control console and then engage the feed lever that is located on the right side of the crossfeed hand wheel. Note, the feed rate may be changed by pressing either the plus or minus button on the control console. When the lathe has finished machining the rotor, turn the lathe off and loosen the cutting engagements. Thank you again for your purchase of the Amco 4000E brake lathe with variable speed and electronic variable feed.